Hello everyone, I'm back. It is Tuesday the 11th of February and there's so many things I need to get through today so I'm just gonna go straight in with the first thing. So the first big shocker about the coronavirus is that the incubation period has been wrong all this time. So before we were told that it would be 14 days but actually it's up to 24 days. Can you imagine that? So a lot of these people who have been released after their 14 days of incubation, they could still be yet to show symptoms. They could still be actively infected and passing it on. They could still be able to pass the test to say that they don't have the virus because it's still in the incubation period and maybe they haven't started to shed the virus yet. That's crazy and that's very worrying because I was just saying yesterday about how do we know when people have recovered and now we're seeing that the incubation period has been wrong this whole time. So what about those people who were released from the ferry in Hong Kong? What about the people who may have been released, I'm not sure if any have been released yet, from the ferry in Japan? What about all the people who travelled back to their home countries and were told by the governments, because of the WHO, because they were told by the governments to self-quarantine for 14 days and now they're back into society? There's going to be another surge of this virus. Also, before we were told that the virus can only survive outside of the body for a very short time, maybe like an hour or two, but now it turns out that the virus can survive for up to eight days outside the body. So if you sneezed on a door handle, eight days later there could still be traces of that virus on the door handle. And what makes it even worse, as if it, it just seems to be getting worse and worse, but what makes it even worse is that the virus can be passed on through feces and through urine and through vomit and pretty much any bodily, any fluid from your body basically can transmit the virus. The thing that's bad about urine and excrement is that when you go to a public toilet or when you go to the toilets in apartment buildings, people who have used the toilet before you, even if they flush the toilet, there could still be vapors from, you know, when you go into the toilet, that, that stink that you get when you go into like a public toilet, that is tiny, tiny little particles, I know it sounds disgusting, tiny particles of, you know. And if this theory is right, if it gets passed on through excrement as well, then when you go into those public toilets or any of those bathrooms where the pipes are all linked and like some of the smell comes up through the drains and stuff like that, they could all be passing on the virus. And if you don't think that that's right, just have a check about SARS and what happened in the Hong Kong apartment complex. The SARS virus got passed on in Hong Kong through the drainage system, through the drainage system. And this could happen with the coronavirus as well if it's able to pass through urine and excrement and it can survive for up to eight days. And it has an incubation period of up to 24 days. This is like a super virus. What is going on? Now we've had reports of who the super spreader is in the UK. I'm just going to refer to him as a super spreader because that's what the news is going with. He's a super spreader because he spread to like 10 people, but I've heard that there are people who have spread it to many more people, but whatever. The super spreader has made a full recovery, but again, with this incubation period being 24 days, it hasn't even been 24 days since he was in Singapore. So I don't know how he's made a full recovery and he's virus free and able to go out into the community. I'm not sure how that works. Ah, oh, there's so many, so many things that are unclear about this. Is he free to go now? That's it. He's made a full recovery, no symptoms, so now he's virus free. Did they check he's virus free and not able to still pass it on to people, even though his symptoms are clear? I mentioned SARS just a second ago. In Hong Kong, an apartment building has been evacuated because four people from the same block have been infected with the coronavirus. Today, a 62-year-old woman was confirmed as infected and she was living 10 floors below a man who was confirmed as having the virus. So again, this drainage system thing, it's, it, it looks like the same pattern as what happened when SARS hit Hong Kong as well. So if that's the case, then we're gonna hear a lot more about this because a lot of people living in apartment buildings all across the whole country, because that's how most people live in apartment buildings, a lot of people are gonna catch this. I'm telling you, we're wheelie right now, when upstairs flushes the toilet, we can hear it going all the way down, and sometimes the smell comes up. So if that is the case, and someone in our building has caught the virus, we need to be evacuated as well. So this is kind of creepy. Today when I looked on a website to see the numbers of people who have caught the coronavirus, like the updated numbers, I noticed that there was something a little different. And it seems like 
again, I'm probably just making this up. You can look for yourself. But it does seem like there's an effort being made to play down the numbers. So they're reporting separately. They're reporting all the numbers separately now, so it looks like they're all a lot lower. I saw active cases of coronavirus separate to recovered cases, separate to deaths. There was still a total, but it seemed like they were trying to dilute it by showing the number of active cases. I think people are more interested in how many people caught the virus, because right now we still don't even know if those people who are cured are actually cured. So I'm not sure if they're trying to play down the numbers on these websites, and I'm not sure if that's coming through from WHO or coming from China or what. But it does seem a little bit strange. You know, when you talk about how many people died in a war, you don't talk about which day are you talking about. You talk about how many people died total, right? You don't separate active to cured and deaths. I, I just think it's a little bit strange. A little bit of a strange way of reporting it. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about the supermarkets, and the supermarkets are packed. There is no shortage of food in Beijing. The last time I personally went to the supermarket was back in January, so it was January the I forgot, 28th, 29th, I put a video on my channel when I went there and it was full of stuff, full of stuff but not full of people. All the shelves were packed, like absolutely packed, and I said the only things that I couldn't find were fresh milk, but I did get one, I got the last, I think the last one or two, I can't remember, and potatoes. For some reason there was a run on potatoes, so all the potatoes were gone. But everything else, everything else, there was plenty and no one was fighting over it. It wasn't like the scenes that I saw from Hong Kong about the toilet roll. It wasn't like that at all. So no problem with supermarkets at all. No worries. And there's just four more things I wanna mention quickly. Um, from what I'm seeing, the WHO seems to be caring a lot about the Chinese economy more than the health of the world, you know, the World Health Organization, as it's called seems to mention how much it trusts China's efforts, which is fine, and saying how little it trusts other countries' efforts, which I just find a little bit strange, considering that the focus of this, there are more cases in China, like by a long shot. What's the point of talking about other countries? Uh, like you're worried about other countries. Like, it's like there's, you know, I'm gonna make a crazy comparison. Let's say that there are forest fires in Australia right now, right? Terrible forest fires. And that's where it's happening. It's like starting to say, we're, we're completely confident in Australia's handling of the forest fires, but we are very worried for Sweden if Sweden had a forest fire. It just seems strange. Why do they keep repeating the same thing? That they're so confident in China's handling of the outbreak, which is fine. They could be, that, that may be true. But why do they need to start going on about how they're worried so much about other countries who have so few cases? You know, China so far has 42,000 cases of the coronavirus. The next country, like the second in the list, is Japan with 163. And then it drops to 49. I mean, why is the WHO so focused on outside of China? There's 42,000 people infected compared to the second in the list with 163. And the WHO spends so much time talking about how concerned they are about if the outbreak spreads to other countries with weak health systems. Focus on China. Stop talking about the other countries so much. There's no comparison right now. The other countries don't have outbreaks. The other countries have a few people infected and the numbers, yes, they are rising, but they're rising so much slower than in China. So I'm not sure why the WHO is so protective of China. That's something that someone else can explain for me. I don't know. The last few things I want to talk about, these are completely unconfirmed reports and it's just stuff that is out there gaining a lot of traction. So I just want to mention it and again, I'm not saying it's true or false. I have my own opinions which I'll let you know as I go along, but I'm not going to say too much about these three because, you know, it's not been officially verified even though there are so many videos of each example. So the first one is in Hubei province, they are starting to use university dorms as quarantine centers. And there are unconfirmed videos of 
student dorms being cleared out, just stuff being thrown out of the dorms into a heap in the middle so they can be used as quarantine centers. And the students don't even know, the students weren't even notified. So when they eventually get back to university, they're gonna have like no stuff. And their rooms, I guess, will be disinfected and cleaned out and whatever, so. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, that's, that's, anyway, unconfirmed, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, I just wanna mention it real quick. And currently there is a lot of air pollution over Wuhan, even though factories are closed, works closed, offices are closed, businesses are closed, people can't drive the cars, but there seems to be smog over Wuhan. Lots of unconfirmed reports about where that smog is coming from. I'm not going to talk about it here. I have my own ideas. But I don't want to say it because, you know, I'm in China right now. I don't want to get myself into trouble. I'm not going to speculate. I'm just going to tell you there is smog over Wuhan right now. And we don't know where it's coming from. And we don't know why. And the last thing I said yesterday about people should be forcibly quarantined if they have come in contact with people exposed to the virus. I think that's, I think that's fair. Uh, of course, ask them first. Of course, tell them, come on, you need to go You need to go to quarantine. You've been exposed to such and such and they've been infected with the virus, so you need to come to the quarantine. And if they refuse, then of course, by force. Yeah, sure. But again, unconfirmed videos that I've seen so many of with some uh, dodgy tactics that are being used, a lot of excessive force, um, and without warning, in the middle of the streets, broad daylight, middle of the night, all sorts, any time. Yeah, so that's happening, maybe, unconfirmed. I didn't see it with my own eyes, so I can't say it's true or false, but the videos are being circulated and they're gaining a lot of traction. I'm sure we'll hear about them soon in the newspapers and other news sources. So yeah, that's all for today. Just wanted to leave it there. Oh, today's been such a negative video. There's nothing positive coming out about this coronavirus right now. It just gets scarier and scarier. We need some positive information that comes out about this coronavirus very soon so that I can get back to my channel and teaching Chinese. That's what I want to do eventually, start teaching Chinese on this channel, but the coronavirus has just taken over my mind. I can't even sleep at night, you know? I just keep refreshing, coronavirus, coronavirus, and I'm just scouring, looking through all the stories, news here, news there, gossip, rumor picture, video, news report from an official source, a video that's been thrown in, an interview. Oh my God, my mind's going crazy about this coronavirus. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Now is, oh, nearly 11 o'clock. I'm early today. All right, see you tomorrow for another update. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. No one's talking about this stuff. All right, peace, bye.